This is my ITX build. I've had it for over a year and it's been a great computer. So this is the Fractal Node 202. Did slight modifications to it, primarily so I could get this Scythe Shuriken cooler in. Also did a little paint job just to add some contrast. And I put these vents in, primarily because the graphics card was getting toasty, so it allows it to suck in fresh air. Exhausted out the back over here, lowered the temperatures, helped me to get a better fan curve, and this computer has been great. So I'm getting ready to go on vacation and she's coming with me. So now typically when you travel on vacation, you take your laptop with you and laptops are great. I mean, they sit on your lap. You could kind of sit at the whole Starbucks and, you know, sip your coffee, mochiata, grande, venti, whatever it is that you like to drink and, you know, play on your laptop. Some people game on it. That's not me. Number one, I'm not a Starbucks guy. I don't drink much coffee. And number two, I really don't use a laptop like that. I primarily like to use the computer and just kind of game at night the last you know a few hours before I go to bed you know once we're done with all the activities and just be comfortable and the one thing I found about the laptop is number one you're very limited with them as far as upgrade path they can get expensive and if you want to get one that games very well or edit very well you're gonna to have to spend a bunch of coins on it you know and coins are not easy to come by nowadays so with this small form factor you can pack her up get a little small monitor and it checks all the boxes. Got the power I need to edit, game, and it should work great. So in this video, um, we're gonna do some maintenance on it. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna pack it up for travel and even a cool monitor and a keyboard that's gonna work very well. So I could just kind of set it up on the go, pack it up, and uh, use it the way I need to use it. So let's open her up. Gotta take off the, uh, the racing shark fin, you know, my Wi-Fi antenna. Let's get this stand underneath off. Now we have four screws, one, two, three, four. And if I remember right, I think it just slides right up. Yep. So to kind of give you an idea of the sins of the mods, one with the Scythe Shuriken, I think it's the big three, Kamehameha, Hadoukik, whatever one you call that. And kind of had to grind all this out right over here. And by grinding out, allowed us room so the cooler could sit in. Cooler is a little taller than what this case calls for, but by doing this, we're allowed to put it in, and also, you have to delete on the vent. It is what it is. And then over here, just cut it out, just like so, so we can add our airflow. And in case you're wondering what this is, this is my uh, CD key that I got from a OEM trade-in, or OEM one that I found, something like that, but I kept my CD key there, so I don't lose it. So as you can see, it's a little tight in here. I mean, not terrible, pretty easy. And what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the storage. But looking at it, I mean, light dust on the fans. We'll take a brush, dust all this off, make it look better. But really cool case to work in. Very happy with it. So let's take a paintbrush, one that hasn't been used for paint preferably. Same thing with this right over here. And considering that I haven't maintained it in over a year, it's not bad. I did game on it a lot because uh, I had surgery uh, about six seven months ago and during the recovery well laying in the bed this was what I used a lot definitely uh, got a lot of game action in it all right hold the fan much better but then again not that bad one may ask should I change the thermal paste at this point it depends on your temperatures um, I've had this for like I said over a year and my temperatures are great fan curves are still holding up really well um, this thing does not get hot and guys here's the key if you're going to run itx and even on your main rigs under vaulting i got this one so this is the ryzen 7 5700 and i have it under vaulted i think it's 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.1500 or whatever it is millivolts 0.15 millivolts and i'm able to keep all my clocks stress test it and it dropped the temperatures i want to say 10 degrees so i'm able to keep a lower fan curve same thing with the graphics card um i forget what it is that i was able to drop this to but i did do some undervolting on this graphics card and it runs fantastic one thing i need to do to this is well the main thing i need to do to it is i need to change out the m.2 so i have a crucial one terabyte runs great runs fantastic but if any of you guys been gaming lately you know that a lot of these games take up so much space and this thing is full I've got a bunch of games that i'm going back and forth on and this thing is full but also i do use this for editing and i've actually run into uh issues with space for that so we need to get that upgraded
So this one is the Crucial P3 PCIe Gen 3 M.2 2280. Fantastic drives. Now, I've always been a Samsung guy, but these drives have been great. Reliable, stable, and yeah, they work really good. Now, we are doing a bit of an upgrade besides the space in the sense that, well, PCIe 4. Now, typically on upgrades like this, the easiest way to do it is to actually clone the drive. And that's actually a good idea, but this system has been through a couple of reiterations, um, different graphics cards, CPUs, motherboards, all that type of stuff. So um, we're going to do a fresh copy of Windows 11 and not clone it. The only downfall is that I am going to have to relearn and remember how to do my undervolts with this graphics card. So that takes a little bit of time. Well, I forgot to hit record, but nothing exciting. Installation is pretty much the reverse of removal. So very simple on that, but we've got the new drive in. This is nice and cleaned up, ready to put it back together. I think there is a BIOS update for this. I am going to do a BIOS update on it. Install Windows 11 and then show you guys how we're going to take it on vacation. So a few things that we're going to need. Number one, our computer. I like the fractal node because it's kind of the same size of a laptop, just maybe a laptop on steroids. And that's where this bag comes in. This is a bag smart and I'll post link to these down below. Got this from Amazon. It was like $20, but I believe the width is 17.6 inches. So 17.6 should allow that to fit in. And it's thick enough in the sense that we could squeeze that in. And we'll show you that just here in a sec. So now that we have our bag, which we're going to take everything with, there's a few other things that we are going to need. HDMI cord. So even though I have a small portable monitor, which we'll talk about that in just a sec, an HDMI cord is a must because you can use the big screen TVs at the hotels. I got like, what, 32 inches, 40 inches. So I always travel with, even when I have my laptop, I always bring an HDMI cord and a keyboard. Now, I'm mostly going to be using this for, you know, just a game or just browse the internet or even set up some um, like Netflix, YouTube, all that type of stuff, whatever, just so I can watch on the TV because, you know, sometimes the cables, they don't have good channels or anything good going on over there. So I use this. It has a trackpad, which works really good. It's small. It's portable. USB dongle. And it's nice and slim. So this is what we're going to be using for the keyboard. And... It's going to fit all nicely in there. So now onto the portable monitors. I've been seeing these pop up a lot lately. Got this on the Black Friday special for like $60. I've been using it for two weeks as a spare monitor well, as a secondary monitor to my main rig so I could do my editing. So like I'll keep all my files and stuff over here and use the screen just to kind of work on the DaVinci Resolve. And this thing is fantastic. Now the brand, uh, I'll just have to post the uh, link that I got it from on Amazon, but it's a portable monitor, comes from China, 1080p, and it looks fantastic. So let me get this set up. So now it comes a lot packaged nicer. Of course, I've used it since then. This is 15.6 inches. It's got some smudges. Like I said, I've been using this a lot. I really enjoyed this monitor. And this little protective cover is actually what holds it together. So now, all we need to do is kind of tuck this like this. This part is magnetic, which goes to the back of the monitor right over here. And if you see right down there, it kind of sits in that little channel there. And that's what kind of keeps this in place. So line that up like so. And if you notice, there's these channels right over here. There's one, there's two. This kind of angles right against it accordingly. And this folds in just like so, just to kind of give you that extra protection as there's rubber feet right over here, so it don't slide. And I can tell you folks, this thing doesn't move. Now for our connectors, this is what I like about it, like all in one stuff. So they give you your mini HDMI, well, whoops, mini HDMI to HDMI, so we can plug that in on the side just like so, and this is gonna go into our graphics cards. But for power, it's real simple. You got a USB-C to USB, you plug it in there and this thing will power it up all from the juice of your computer. And if you don't have that or you want to use this monitor for something else, they also give you an adapter for it. So that's actually pretty nice. And you get another USB-C to USB-C. So you have options. So you could plug it directly to your USB-C or use the USB-C to the regular USB. Just matter of preference. So let me get that installed. I'm just going to use the regular USB and it tells you right over here.
just like so you got DC 5 volt type C HDMI and actually you could plug something into this if you need to have like an extra charger or I don't know whatever you would need the extra USB-C for but we're just gonna plug it in using the regular USB-C into the front of the case just like so let's plug in our mini HDMI power it on and it works looks really good I mean for a $60 monitor for a small and portable as it is I mean it gets the job done another cool feature about this monitor is it has built-in speakers so you know you can listen to whatever you're listening to and it's all in this cool small little package so as you can see small keyboard small monitor our ITX build how well does it package in here That's pretty much our whole computer. Now, of course, we do need to throw in a power cable. Forgot to mention that. Now, for our bag, if you look, it opens up very wide. Now, I should have sprang for the extra couple of dollars on the more expensive one, but I'm cheap. This one has these extra compartments, which I really don't need, and maybe I might consider cutting it out. I haven't decided yet, but everything should slide in. desktop goes in just like so now for our monitor because we have this extension room right over here and the keyboard and your cables done we're ready for vacation but let's say we need more room for more cables or even if you want to get yourself a wireless mouse I don't know where mine's is but you know let's just pretend that this is it I'm gonna pop my USB cable in there wireless mouse and the kitchen sink nope everything zippers up easily it's padded all the way around and my computer ready to travel on vacation so as you can see I have all my stuff in here and I'm ready to go it's protected now a few things to kind of keep in mind number one I would not like put this in a compartment that's not safe you know just don't throw it in the trunk next to your tire iron jack or anything um, this is gonna when we travel this is gonna sit in the back seat of my truck right behind my seat where it's not gonna move around yes there is some cushion on here but don't take a chance with unnecessary abuse but if you're going on vacation this is a way to travel now the point of the laptop is more convenience and portability in the sense that you kind of use it to go like i said go to starbucks sip on some coffee you know do your thing over there but in my case when i go on vacation um i want the most power i want the most bang for the buck and this works now this is a Ryzen 7 5700 32 gigs of DDR4, a RTX 3080, uh, 2TB M.2 and to get a laptop equivalent to that, I'm probably going to look to spend anywhere from, I would roughly say $1,000 to $1,500. This I built with the purpose for the bedroom, just as, you know, I needed something small and to kind of tuck away. But now I also have another purpose for it that I can travel with it, take it with me on the go, and I don't need to worry about investing on another laptop. This will last me a lot longer. Upgrade path is a lot easier as I could put a Ryzen 7 5950X, undervolt it, um, upgrade to a 40 series graphics card if I want to go with 64 gigs of memory. But with that being said, you know, different strokes for different folks. This works for me. So I will post links down below to um, the monitor, this case, uh, the keyboard, all this type of stuff. If you guys want to check it out and, you know, if you got an ITX rig and you're looking to travel. So comment down below. Let me know thoughts, concerns, criticisms. What do you think of my travel arrangements? You think this will work good? Will it survive? I hope so. I'm fairly confident. Like I said, it's just going to sit in the truck right behind the seat. It's not going to move, dance around or bounce anywhere. I would not put this in an unsecure place or something that could kind of smash into it. It'll be just fine. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.